Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever you're watching this video, wherever you are on this beautiful world, guys. Welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi Tayutu, and yes, you might recognize me and my family from three and a half years ago when we sold literally everything we owned, went all into Bitcoin and started traveling the world. Now, three and a half years later, still traveling the world and about to start a crazy ass tour with this vehicle behind me, the Land Rover Discovery. And we're going to drive through Spain, through Portugal, some other countries to create kick ass content to support crypto and blockchain 24 seven as a family. It's going to be an awesome three months. So sign up, please sign up to the channel and click the notification bell. So you will be notified on every video we make. And yes, check yesterday's video as well, because there I give a small tour of this machina behind me. We call it the Bitcoin family machina because it's a machine with 190 horsepower and we are going to go uphill, downhill, beach, mountain, river, whatever is possible with this machine. In today's video, we are going to start with packing the car. I'm going to show you how we try to pack the car, how the kids help, how the wife helps, and if it all fits in the car, because these three daughters of mine, they have a shitload of clothes. Yes, also talking about Bitcoin charts, together with Lisa and Edwards and Sean from Hardfucking, we are taking a look at the Bitcoin chart, the Ethereum chart, and of course, at the trade of the week. And at the end, when I'm finally finished, because I already recorded some of these videos early in the morning, and when I'm finished with packing, go for a lunch in a very beautiful Spanish tapas restaurant to again taste these amazing tapas here in Spain before we leave for Portugal. Enjoy today's video, guys. Think I need to check with the kids how they want to be seated because there are two chairs in the back of the car as well so maybe I fold down the middle one of these two three so then we have one kid there one kid there and one on the back but I don't know if we have enough if we have enough space to, um, to pack everything then do you want to sit with three in a row mm -mm. or one empty one and one in the back one in the back are you sure i'm sure i'm not going to sit in the back i am but we're in, in the back do you want to see the share before or no. because if i'm going to pack the car now i cannot change it anymore i don't know if it's uh, nice do you want to sit three in a row mm -hmm. or two, one, empty, one, and one in the back? What's the second one? So, does my guitar fit as well? If you mention your guitar one more time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This is the first time I want to bring my guitar. Yeah, but you just keep on mentioning, can I bring my guitar? I want to bring my guitar. Yeah. Okay, so that yes, you, you can bring your guitar. Is, is that why you're sucking the clothes? <laughs> so I'm not sucking the clothes. The, uh, what is it? Soft soil or vacuum cleaner? <laughs> vacuum cleaner, that one is sucking. <laughs> What are you doing, Julie? Um, searching the best uh, city to stay in. Which one are we doubting between? Portimao. Portimao. Albufera. Albufera. Lagos. Lagos. What is Lagos? So what are you checking then? Primark. <laughs> um, just fast food restaurants. If the beach is nice. Mm, what do you think is important, Jessa? Just like a McDonald's, Primark. Fucking unhealthy kids. A beach, a swimming pool, swimming pool. and a nice house. And a nice house. Mm -hmm. And you, Miss Mike? 
McDonald's. What the fuck do you have in McDonald's? McDonald's. <laughs> I hope it's a face. <laughs> huh? It's not. I hope it's a face. <laughs> oh, McDonald's could sponsor a whole tour, I think, because you eat so many things over there. Um, you still look very beautiful, thin, and everything. So, <laughs> but inside you're rotten. <laughs> As you can see, guys, it all fits in the back of the car, so we don't need to do bags or anything else. But at the kids' feet, so they can sit very relaxed the next eight hours because tomorrow we are going to drive eight hours but first now guys i am going to have some lunch hey 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 hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey i'm gonna show you this look look who said satoshi was craig wright just saying satoshi is female yeah I knew it. satoshi is me i knew it i knew it all along we had we had a whale cluster um between 9,000 and 9,600. So we, we see these whale clusters where they put, um, you know, these by walls and cell walls uh, at certain regions to hold the area sort of, you know, and confuse traders. And, you know, that uh, that's kind of what they do. So between 9,000 um, sort of, I think it was 9,000, 9,600, we saw this whale, whale cluster and we've got another one right where we are at the moment. So, which is um, also what I call a liquidity pool. So where they're In taking five, out... Five, seven hour, I think, Lisa, is the, the figure. Yeah. So that's that's where, you know, the, the cell wall is for the whales. And then um, just below 10 there's a, there's another buy wall but that the the lower buy wall i've been watching on bitfinex has been moving up and down so um you know that that kind of pushes up as we go up to hold the levels so when it bleeds down a bit it kind of pushes up a little bit and um you know that's sort of holding those prices then they remove the buy wall and it falls down again so rinse repeat so that that's kind of what's happening i want to show you uh crypto quant which we can see like all the movements of uh where the bitcoin and all the money is going at the moment so if we see this is uh binance inflows so if we have a look at all of these um exchanges so if we see this massive big inflow of bitcoin into the exchanges in march we saw that massive dump so you know all the spot exchanges had it like literally every exchange. So, um, you know, we go to minor flows and we see, we go up here. So this is the, the dump that we had from 12,000. So we saw all the slush pools um, bringing in sort of money into the exchanges and, and flooding the exchanges with Bitcoin. So the, the only thing that we're seeing here at the moment with these is on Twitter, we used to have um, whale calls. We've still got those. And um, the whale calls sort of report the, the larger movements. They're not catching all of these movements anymore because a lot of these are going through, um, you know, wrap BTC and all these hidden transactions. Right. So into the exchanges, which makes it more difficult to trace. So this is why CryptoQuant is such an amazing site because we can see these you know, tr big, massive amounts of Bitcoin coming into the exchanges. Like we Lisa, can see... Lisa, Lisa, question. When, when we talk about miners' fees coming on to the, the spot exchanges, mm -hmm. uh, just, just for people new, uh, uh, is that meaning they're putting BTC back into the market, correct? Yeah. So um, what happened was at 12,000, all the miners moved... So obviously they mine BTC, you know, it gets to it. It's in massive amounts of profit at the moment. I think most miners, um, their break evens about five, five and a half, six thousand now. It, it goes up um, as electricity and, and all of that goes up. So, you know, they're kind of a hundred percent profit on any BTC they were selling at 12,000. So um, there was a lot of, um, Chinese miners that moved a lot of money onto exchanges. And uh, it seems there's like a mining like war at the moment that's going on with BTC and they're, they're moving a lot of this BTC and selling it. So, and, and therefore holding down the price. The highest so, 2017 at the moment. Yeah. 
so it, it's kind of crazy. So we can see these, you know, these outflows um, coming in. So there's, you know, normally we have a lot of outflows sort of coming in into the market um, and they're, they're sort of, you know, Tether sort of holds that up and, you know, sort of stops the market from dropping. But when you've got like massive inflows, like we saw here from the slush pools, mm. it, there's just no possible way that you can hold the market up with that much tether. So when it's, it's coming up, so, you know, billions of dollars come entering into the market. So we also saw that with a, a massive drop um, on the, the market, total market cap and Bitcoin dominance like increasing at that point. So yeah, like this chart was given to me and I, I didn't think anything of it at the time. Um, and over the last week, I've done a lot more research on it. And yeah, it just, it makes so much sense as to, you know, following where the BTC flow is going as to how the, that sort of moving in the market, you know, and obviously we've got um, miners and whales with these, you know, pools of money that they're putting these cell walls on. And yeah, it's just, it, it's going to sit there sideways for a little bit longer until that sort of, they've got the liquidity they want. They've bought up the BTC that they want and then, you know, they'll, they'll either let it go up or down. I, I still think that we're going to go up on BTC. You know, that's still my primary sort of direction on BTC. It's, it's holding key levels. So, yeah. Can I, can I ask one more thing? Because, you know, we all always look at the miners, but um, isn't it not, not so that since the halving, there's more Bitcoin bought into the market by the exchanges than the miners? I think the miners only bring about 900 Bitcoin per day or whatever. Well, we can, the exchange is yeah. 1,400 Bitcoin, I think. So, so if we go to exchange any... flows, um, you know, we, we've, we've got sort of, you know, this up and down sort of movement and we do have a lot more Bitcoin coming onto the exchanges as well. So um, you'll, you'll notice... They make, they make more Bitcoin in fees than the miners make in mining at the moment, isn't it? That? Yeah, no, all exchanges take, um, like, Bitcoin in fees, though. So it depends on how, like, you're trading it. So it might be USDT or it might be, you know, BNB or whatever, however you're trading it. So Sushi. Sushi, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, we do have, um, you know, a, a lot of sort of, we're looking at the flows here, like, you know, we have a lot of tether coming in. So we've got Paxos and USDC and, you know, sort of all of these true USD. So we can, we can trace all of this sort of tether coming in through CryptoQuant. And, you know, it cor correlates to what Bitcoin's doing. So we've got the miners selling, we've got the exchanges trying to hold up these, you know, prices at the moment. So we've then got that wall on either side. So where, you know, Bitcoin is just holding this pattern. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good website. So, I'll put a link below. Is that, is, that, is that free? Yeah, yeah. You just need to sign up. So it's free at the moment. I'll, I'm sure they'll start charging for it at some stage as people, it gets more popular. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, the BTC chart that we've been trading. So I still believe that we need to retest this previous support. So this previous support is obviously this region that we had um, while we were trading this 12,000 sort of region uh, that we went once over and we did the fifth wave. But we're still sort of trading in that. We do need always to retest regions to see sort of, you know, how much, you know, money is in the market, how much support there is. And, you know, just for overall sort of health of, you know, coins and tokens, you need to retest um, previous supports as resistance before, you know, dropping down. So normally, normally we'll see like this is, you know, had three or four retests. So I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So on the sixth, um, we dropped through. So that, that's quite a few sort of um, retests on that same support. So this is going to be quite a strong resistance, having had six previous attempts to um, like to hold it. 
So now it's going to be quite a tough resistance to break through. So it's probably going to take a little bit to get through that or, you know, a lot of tether coming into the market. So either way, this is, I think we're sort of going up to retest this. Uh, it's, it's not going to be a, a quick thing. It's going to be sort of long and drawn out as it is. The market's moving really slow right now. But during that period, it allows, when the market does go um, quite sideways and slow, it does allow like alts to move. It allows BTC pairs to move in particular. And, you know, so th they will be bouncing. Um, we saw a lot of the alts bouncing over the weekend, which was nice. Um, so if we have a look. So... Um, Pretty crazy this, bounces in some of the alts over the last week, sort of in the 40 to 50% range again. Yeah, it has been. So this is uh, Bitfinex uh, longs and shorts. So we can see... Um, so the other day uh, I posted that the shorts were going to die, which they did because we, you know, if we have a look um, at these charts as well and we chart them as we would any normal chart, they don't move the same as, you know, in Elliott Wave or anything like that, but we can still chart it. So um, the shorts hit a strong resistance here. This is quite a strong resistance. It's not broken through in the whole time that we've been tracking that. And, you know, it's, it's rejected. So this, this was our drop down that we saw. We also needed to hold um, under 10,350 on um, Bitcoin so that we didn't get another gap over the weekend. And, and that was that drop. So we dropped down, we opened up and, you know, we're under that position again. So there's no gap um, that needs to be filled in that region. So, you know, it, it kind of... You know, everyone's so obsessed with filling gaps and, and all of that at the moment. And it's crazy. It's like, so I, I've seen on, on Twitter a lot. So we've got a gap at, I think, 9,600-ish. And then we've got another gap down sort of maybe seven nine to 8,000-ish. Like, and, and just lately because, you know, it's going sideways the whole of Twitter has decided that we're going down to fill that lower gap. And I'm like, where did this come from? All of a sudden we're bullish and now we're going down to fill a second gap. It's like, okay, just short it guys and lose your money. I don't, so, even, understand, I don't even understand why people think that we need to fill these gaps. This, these gaps are created because these people from this exchange are, are just sleeping, you know? Yeah. They wake, they wake up with a different, yeah. It's, yeah, it, to, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's not Bitcoin even. Price level and they wake up at a Bitcoin price level and then there's a gap. So why would the market naturally need to fill a gap? I, I, I don't see the logic in it. I really don't. I can understand the logic in uh, filling a gap on a, on a normal Bitcoin chart, like on a Bitfinex chart or a BitMEX chart or whatever. Yep. But CME gaps uh, are not filled like they're not even traded in Bitcoin. They're traded in, oh. you know, they're settled in USDT. So... It just doesn't those, make sense. Those guys sleep too much. <laughs> yeah, it's like they, they close the market like it's a traditional market. It's not yeah. even traded the same as Bitcoin. So it's like, why are we even like yeah. bringing that into the equation that this is something that's going to happen? It's just stupid. This is my rant for the day. What's happening with Ethereum? <laughs> All right, so Can Ethereum, get more? Um, I was saying, was going to come up and, and retest the MAs, which it did. It's... Uh, come up and it's retested the 100 MA here. Uh, this is a four hour chart and it's rejected. So we have a cross support here, which we've had a bounce on, which is a nice bounce. So I still believe we're like we're seeing in Bitcoin, we're still rising in Ethereum. We're going to come up here and, and retest this previous support. So this is around sort of, you know, 432-ish. We may get to about 446, depending on the angle. So it, the angle could come over this way because, you know, we're such a sideways market right at the moment, um, you know, and, and retest up here. Uh, that won't be sort of, you know, outside of the realm of possibility because that's a, a FIB level on this chart. And, um, and then I think we'll drop. So this is a, a strong support in this region. But um, if we're looking at FIB levels on this chart and, you know, even stronger support. So if we zoom out like Didi likes to do, so we'll go to the day chart. We can see that we've got this, this blue support here. And, you know, Ethereum should come down to this. It's around the $280 mark. So, you know, 
Sean loves me telling everyone that Ethereum is going to drop so much. So we're probably going to go around 445, then drop down to about 280. Um, this is uh, kind of Bitcoin should go to about 11, sort of 200, 11, 300. Then we'll probably drop down to about the 9, 800 mark. I don't think we're filling the gap. Yeah. Alt is a favorite of mine. Yeah. So this is, this is loop ring. Um, and it's, it's doing really well. So it's had uh, a nice correction. We've corrected to supports and, you know, come across and, and broken out. So we're at a resistance point at the moment. So this resistance has been developed from July. So it's quite a strong resistance. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points of resistance here. So um, and we haven't been able to break through it. We've, we've come up, but we've pushed right down. So a lot of volume came into Loopring at this point, only to push it back down, which was, uh, it's not really a good sign, but, you know, we're, we're kind of trying. We've had a lot less volume come in and we're still at this same point. So, mm. you know, with a little bit more volume in on Loopring, we should be able to push through. So the, the RSI in the four hour is, is looking really good. So if we put, we've got some support here on the RSI, um, you know, we're above. So, you know, we've broken through here. We're kind of trying to push through here. I really think on this seventh go, we should start to push through. We should come up, um, I'll put some lines on here. We should come up, touch down, retest this again, and then head up. So that's kind of what I think will happen in loop ring. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to actually put this one as my trade of the week. And, you know, I think it's, it's going to do some really good stuff this week mm. and, and start moving. So, you know, if you buy, I will be looking at this one to sort of buy anywhere down to this sort of region. I'll be laddering in and here and within the next sort of week or two, we should see some strong movements. So, that, you know, particularly we see on this RSI, if we're looking, you know, when uh, Loopring has done sort of these movements and we've had quite strong breakouts. So, you know, we've got here where we were under a resistance, we were under a resistance on the RSI, we've broken out. So same thing here, we're under a resistance on the RSI, we're under a resistance on the chart, so we should break out as well. So that's something that I really look for on these charts when I'm, I'm trading them. So, you know, we'll get a little bit more sideways and, and then we'll continue up. So um, short term, target on this uh we should make about 50 percent wow romantic dinner in a cave you can walk around here woman <gasps> do you like us romantic romantic fantastic Really nice restaurant here. Yes, we are going to sit outside. The weather is good, but beautiful atmosphere of music. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, give the video a thumbs up, 
share with your community, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified on every new video I make. And please leave a comment because I love to respond to your comments. Thanks for watching today and hopefully see you tomorrow again in the next episode of this Bitcoin Family Machina Tour. Always remember to zoom out in crypto and to zoom in at life. Try to enjoy every single minute of the day because that is exactly what makes life worth living. Thanks again and see you tomorrow. Bye.